All right, my friends, so we're welcome. I guess this is part four or five, I can't remember. But we're back now to talk about uh, the continuation of why you need a Roth IRA or Roth of some sort, 401k or IRA. And what we had was we had our couple, uh, Bob and Jane YouTube will say, and they uh, they hit 80 years old. They had 2.080 million in their deferred accounts. IRA, 401k, TSP, doesn't really matter, 403b. But they had 2.08 million in there. Now, if you just if this is the first time you watch, go back a few episodes because you'll see how he got two million. And you're like, I don't have two million. I'm only 50 years old and I got 150,000. That's what Bob and Jane each had. 50 years old, they had 150,000 dollars. They're both making 50,000 a year, deferring 10,000 a year into their traditional 401k. Company was matching 4,000 a year, an 8% match, which is pretty good. And they kept doing that from 50 until 60, and they're getting 7% a year returns. Then they retired, and they're living off a pension without even have whatever. They weren't touching any of this money. And you can run these numbers any which way you want. doesn't matter. The point is what we're trying to make here. They emphasize, emphasize the point, and that's what I'll show you here right now. So now from 60 to 70, again, they're just living you know, high on the hog, living fat and happy, loving life. And now at 70, they had to start taking distributions from their IRAs. And then the distributions, though, were less than the growth because even though they're getting 7% a year up until the age of 70, they backed off a little bit and said, oh, we only want to get 5% a year now. We don't want to take so much risk. So now they're only getting 5% a year. And it took them until about 80 before, actually 79, 80, can't remember, one of those years before, they started having to take out more money than they're adding to it. And so now what's going on here, this is a follow-up to that, they hit 80, they got 2.08 million in their account, so here's their RMD factors, 17.9, 17.1, you can see that. So at 81, they had to take out 116,000 of RMDs, required distribution. You add, which left their account. So what happens, you take this amount right here, subtract, or you take this amount right here, divide by that amount, by this amount, excuse me. So this divided by that gives you this, all right? Then you add the remainder of this minus this, you times that by 1.05 because that's the rate of return. And that leaves them with an account value at the end of when they're 81 of 2.062 million. And we keep doing that. So 2 million here, take out, you got to divide by this amount, it gives you RMD, you got to subtract this from that, times the remainder by, by 1.05 or whatever rate of return you're using. And you'll slowly start seeing this decrease. Now, Anyone want to, look, why I got some pink on there? <laughs> Anyone want to, why do I get, why, what, what's the deal with the pink? I meant it to be red. I just don't have a stupid uh, erase mark that's red for the love of me. I don't know what get that. Why would you not have a bright red erase mark in the pack you buy? Well, anyway, because that's when the husband dies. So at 84, both these guys were the same exact age. So at 84, the husband dies. And we always call up the husband, very chivalrous at Heritage Wealth Planning. Don't let the media or the university say there's no chivalry left. We always call up the husband here, unless there's some reason not to. So here's when the husband dies. And the reason I have this in black still, this right here, is because remember, she's still married filing jointly, all right? So she's still married filing jointly. So this required distribution will be still taxed as a married filing jointly taxpayer, which you'll see the asterisk is up here. So now what we do is we take their social security, half that, plus the required distributions, and that gives us not taxable income, but the amount of income that's going to be subject to taxation, 40800 of their Social Security. Because what we're, what we're doing here is we've got to figure out, first and foremost, how much of their Social Security be subject to taxation. I don't need to do the provisional income stuff here because I know for a fact what's going to happen. 85% of that amount will be subject to taxation. I, I know that just because I've done this so many times. So 48,000 times 85% is 40,800 of their Social Security that will be added to their RMD amount uh, to figure out what their gross income, their adjusted gross income is. All right, so we add these two numbers. Their, their uh, AGI is 170,000. Subtract their two standard deductions because even though Bob has died in this calendar year, he is still a married, she is still, Jane is still a married filing jointly tax paying unit. And so in this case, their uh, growth, their taxable income is one hundred forty-three thousand eight thirty-three. Uh, the tax brackets for a married couple is, you can see, zero to nineteen thousand roughly is the ten percent, nineteen to seventy-eight thousand roughly is the twelve percent, and uh, about above that, uh, seventy-eight thousand, seventy-eight thousand to something I forgot, but they're still in the twenty-two percent bracket. So we times these up, and we get uh, nineteen hundred plus six to eight forty plus fourteen thousand three hundred. So their total tax. 
is 23,040 in this regard, all right? So again, even though Jane survives Bob in this calendar year, they are still a married filing jointly taxpaying unit. This amount of uh, gross income right here, uh, right there, it will not be, let's see, that will be close to putting that, bear me just a second, that will married filing jointly, uh, married couples, no, so that's going to, ooh, yes, it will. That right there will put them right at their MAGI for an increased uh, Medicare premium of $53.50 each, right above $170, my friends. So married couples with MAGI, which is modified adjusted gross income before your standard deductions or exemptions kick in or item uh, deductions, so that will mean they'll both pay $53.50 more in Medicare premiums plus an extra $13 a month more in their prescription drug plan. So they're going to pay another basically $150 a month for the Medicare premiums. Yep. And then uh, it's only going to get worse from there. But it's, they're just a little bit over that. So, of course, if they would have done some smart tax planning, they could have avoided that. But, eh, I mean, oh, you don't need to do any tax planning. Yeah, you see all right, so now watch this. Now we got a plus sign here or a cross for the next asterisk, which you look up here. So this is the first year that Jane's got to file as a single taxpayer. Now, notice the RMD tables are still the same. Why? Because they're the exact same age. Unless Bob left his money to the church or the kids directly and bypassed Jane, she's going to inherit the IRA, the 401k, whatever it is. And nothing changes for her. So she inherits Bob's money, like my wife would inherit mine, but she still has the same required minimum distribution numbers here. It's still based on her age, which again, in this case, is 85 years old. So we take the previous year amount, 1.973 million, divide by 14.8, uh, which is the calculation for this year as an 85-year-old man or woman, doesn't matter. And we get an RMD, in this case, of 139.976. Now, the reason this is all in pink, because this is all now her as a single taxpayer, unless she's a qualifying widow. And I assume that if you're 85 years old, you're not a qualifying widow, i.e. You, you don't care for chick kids. So in this case, she has 130, basically 140,000 of RMDs. So let's go up here and look at her tax stuff. Now, she did lose Bob's Social Security. So the only thing she has is Social Security, her own 24,000, plus her own required minimum distributions of 140. So her, her amount of Social Security, which would be 85% of that is going to be taxed, plus this RMD equals 160, 160,000. That is her uh, adjusted gross income. Again, 85% of that 24,000 will be subject to income tax, plus the required minimum distributions. After her itemized deduction, her standard deduction of 13,600, uh, her taxable income is 146. All right, so 146,000 is her taxable income. And if you look at the trustee tax brackets for a single person, zero to 9,500 is at the 10%. 95 to 38,000 is at the 12%. 38,000 to 82,000 is at the 22%. 82,157 is at the 24%. And so what's going to happen is she has taxable income of 146, so she's still in the 24% bracket. But here next year, or even a year after that, but pretty soon she will be in a, I'll tell you right now, uh, she's going to be in a 32% bracket in about two years. 157 is when she goes to the 32% bracket. So just a few short years, she'll be in a 157, uh, the 32% bracket. Wow. And so when you factor all these, you have a tax for her of 29596 which is uh, 6000 more than, 6500 more than what it was when she was married filing jointly. So 6500 divided by 23040 is a 28% increase in taxes, even though her income went down by 24000 bucks. So before she had... Um, let's see, one, one twenty nine six three three plus forty eight thousand. She had one hundred seventy seven thousand between her and Bob of income with her Social Security, his Social Security, and the required distributions, and now she has one seventy seven twenty four thousand plus one thirty nine 
She has 14,000 less, so 14 divided by 177. She has about 10% less income, even though she has 28% more taxes. Boom, but it doesn't end there, my friends. All right, so her modified adjusted gross income is this right here, 160. What does that do for a single taxpayer when it comes to Medicare? Oh, let's take a look, well, shall we? So if you look, and this is my trusty Medicare thing directly from the Medicare.gov, which you can, uh, or SSA.gov, you can absolutely find yourself. So if you think I'm lying to you, you can check. So for single taxpayers with Maggie, Maggie above 133 and um, to 160, and she's above 160. So she has, for individuals with a modified adjusted gross income above 160, she has to pay the standard premium plus $294 a month more for Part B, plus another $75 a month for Part D. All right, so she, I mean that's uh, so she's basically tripling her Medicare premiums. It went from 134 to 294 just right there. Uh, that's uh, that's pretty painful. Uh, no other way around that. In fact, that's uh, does it give even more? I guess that's it. So she is in the highest bracket for Medicare premiums uh, that you can do. Yeah, for modified just gross income above 160, your standard premium 134 plus 294.60, and your Medicare Part D, your prescription drugs. Is roughly the thirty-four dollars plus seventy-four to eighty. So, remember that side account too that we had. Remember she had that. Uh, they were putting twenty-three forty-nine a year into account that she wasn't using for, or they, they Bob and Jane weren't using for the. Uh, that they were saving on taxes. They put in the side account as well. So that guy is growing. Don't get me wrong, but now they got paid dividends, taxes on those dividends, qualified dividends, and tax on those long-term capital gain because their taxable income is well above the twelve percent bracket. That's a fact too. So at the end of the day, what does this mean? Well, because they have these huge, huge mandatory distributions, uh, they're both gonna be in modified adjusted gross income brackets where they gotta pay more for Medicare. Now, just on that alone, you should see the value of a Roth because you say, huh, even if we only did 4,000 a year into the Roth, or I mean 10,000 a year into the Roth, and I'll do one on this in just a second, the facts are our income would have been reduced. So at least right here, we would not be subject and towards the higher Medicare premiums for sure. Uh, she won't be subject to the higher Medicare premiums either, but I'll show you that in the last video I do in this series. At the end of the day, you've got to look at the taxes, not just what you're paying today versus the savings you're gonna have. In this case, your savings, $2,300 a year in taxes from deferring in your, into your traditional 401k, but you're losing that bar none. You're losing $6,300 a year in taxes just on the back end. Each and every year, it's only going to get more and more painful too because her tax bracket is going up each and every year. On top of that, the Medicare premiums are costing you another, you know, that's another $3,600 right there at $294 a month. Uh, but never mind this, uh, the Part B, that's $75 a month there too. So basically another $4,000 a year. So you're losing, to save $2,349 in taxes this year, you're going to lose huge amounts of taxes, at least $10,000 on the back end. On top of that, you're going to pay tax on qualified dividends and long-term capital gains on that account that you had, the side account that you used to save, uh, that you were saving from your tax money as well. So it's not just a, an apples to apples. You got to look at apples on your how much you're going to pay more, because you will pay more if you do the Roth for your 401k. That's fact. That's the apples. But you got to compare apples and oranges and pineapples and strawberries, all right? And the simple reason for that is because there's so much more going on, on the back end that you don't even begin to see. Never mind the fact when you leave this to your ch kids, how much are they going to lose when they inherit this? So again, you're saving $2,300 a year in taxes. Wonderful. You're going to lose that big time on the back end. I'm just, you're going to get killed. On top of that, you're going to lose it for Medicare premiums. All the other stuff that goes with it, never mind how much you're going to lose when you leave it to your heirs. Even if your heirs are responsible with their money, they still got to take taxes out. They still got to pay tax. Even if they stretch it out over their life expectancy, which highly problematic, highly suggest they won't, but even if they were to do that, it's still taxable as ordinary income. And if they're in a higher tax bracket than you were, uh, there you go. You're losing money there as well. So anyway, stay tuned for this last one. I'll show you what it looks like if we do a Roth instead. So if you like what you see, subscribe. Comments, welcome. Always welcome. Thumbs up. And of course, always go to the blog at heritagewealthplanning.com. Thanks.